do. So when looking at a problem like this, this is what we call our solutions, right? And here's the intercepts. And they want us to create a polynomial with integer coefficients. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be kind of working backwards. Rather than having a polynomial, factoring it, and finding what x is equal to, which you know, could be multiple solutions, now we're given the solutions, and we want to work backwards to the polynomial. So remember, these are your solutions, the x-intercepts of our polynomial. So we can say that x is going to be equal to all three of these solutions. All right. And just remember, too, another thing that I uh, just thought of. Remember, what, let's say if they only gave you one, two solutions, 3 and 2 plus i. Well, remember the complex conjugate, you, know, you would have to know that this solution has to exist, right? So just remember that complex conjugates have to exist. So now we have them set equal to x. But remember, where did we get them set equal to x? Well, that was by applying the zero product property, which means they all had to be set equal to 0. So now I'm just going to rewrite these all set equal to 0. Does everybody understand all I did was subtracted them or added them to the other side? Now they're set equal to 0. Now I can rewrite them as the zero product property, which would be all set equal to 0. So I can write them as x minus 3 times x minus 2 minus i times x minus 2 plus i equals 0. If you guys remember, what we used to do is when we had a product equal to 0, we set them all equal to 0, and then we'd solve, right? So this is just like working backwards. So now comes in the difficult part, and you don't have to follow along this. If you like multiplying a trinomial times a trinomial, you can definitely go ahead and do this. However, the technique that I showed you guys that I think it makes this much easier is if we group the first two terms together, we notice that these two terms are exactly the same, as well as the second two terms are exactly the same, except one's subtraction and one's addition. Therefore, when you have two terms, that are exactly the same, but one's a subtraction, one's addition, then that is, goes back to what we call the difference of two squares. Right? So now I can just rewrite, I can actually multiply these by applying the difference of two squares. So then it'll look like x minus 3 times x minus 2 squared minus i squared. Would everybody agree? Anybody have any questions on that? Right, so now let's go and evaluate. So now I have x minus 3. Now x minus 2, that's a binomial squared, which is going to produce a perfect square trinomial. So when I multiply x, x minus 2, please note that x minus 2 squared does not equal x squared minus or x squared plus 4. Right? You don't square both of those numbers. You've got to multiply x minus 2 times x minus 2, which I'm going to do, unfortunately, in my head, because I want to get this over minus 4x plus 4. Minus i squared is negative 1. Right? You guys don't need me to multiply x minus 2 times x minus 2, right? You guys can all do that. Separate sheet. So that's that. That's x minus 2 factored out. i squared is negative 1. Now let's go and rewrite this as x minus 3 times x squared minus 4x. That becomes a positive plus 5. Now, in this case, I have a binomial times a trinomial. I definitely am going to use a uh, foiling technique to help me keep everything organized. So the best way, the way that I like to do this is just using the box method. This just keeps everything organized for me. So I'll just put the binomial up top and put the trinomial along the side. And now, simply all I'm going to do is multiply the area of each box. And that's pretty much foiling. I mean, you could foil if you want to and just you know, distribute a property. But I like using the box method because it keeps everything really organized. So this is x cubed. x squared times negative 3 is negative 3x squared. x times negative 4x um, is a negative 4x squared. Negative 4x times uh, negative 3 is going to be a positive 12x. That becomes 5x. And this becomes a negative 15. Anybody have any questions so far with that? Then we notice that these are like terms. These are like terms. So therefore, my final polynomial is y equals x cubed, bless you, minus 7x squared plus 17x minus 15. Preguntas. 
Good. Questions? No? Bad? Yes? Yeah. Okay. So based on uh, your own response, 